Hi guys, um, I'm going to finish up uh, chapter 19 and we were in the middle of it because it was a long chapter and it's called the egg sack. At nine o'clock, Mr. Arable's truck rolled into the fairgrounds and came to stop at Wilbur's pen. Everyone climbed out. Look, cried Fern. Look at Charlotte's web. Look what it says. The grown-ups and the children joined hands and stood there studying the new sign. Humble, said Mr. Zuckerman. Now isn't that just the word for Wilbur? Everyone rejoiced to find that the miracle of the web had been repeated. Wilbur gazed up lovingly into their faces. He looked very humble and very grateful. Fern winked at Charlotte. Lurvy soon got busy. He poured a bucket of warm slops into the trough, and while Wilbur ate his breakfast, Lurvy scratched him gently with a smooth stick. Wait a minute, said Avery. Look at this. He pointed to the blue tag on Uncle's pen. This pig has run first prize already. Zuckerman's and the arable stared at the tag. Mrs. Zuckerman began to cry. Nobody said a word. They just stared at the tag. Then they stared at Uncle. Then they stared at the tag again. Lurvy took out an enormous handkerchief and blew his nose very loud. So loud, in fact, that the noise was heard by the stable boys over at the horse barn. Can I have some money, said Fern. I want to go out on the midway. You stay right where you are, said Mother. Tears came to Fern's eyes. What's everybody crying about, asked Mr. Zuckerman. Let's get busy. Edith, bring the buttermilk. Mrs. Zuckerman wiped her eyes with her handkerchief. She walked to the truck and came back with a gallon jar of buttermilk. Bath time, said Zuckerman cheerfully. He and Mrs. Zuckerman and Avery climbed into Wilbur's pen. Slowly, after pouring buttermilk on Wilbur's head and back, it trickled down his sides and cheeks, and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman rubbed it into his hair and skin. Passerby stopped to watch. Pretty soon there was quite a crowd. Wilbur grew beautifully white and smooth. The morning sun shone through his pink ears. He isn't as big as the pig next door, remarked one person, but he's cleaner. That's what I like. So do I, said a man. He's humble, too, said a woman, reading the sign on the web. Everyone who visited the pig pen had a good word to say about Wilbur. Everyone admired the web. And, of course, nobody noticed Charlotte. Suddenly, a voice was heard on the loudspeaker. Attention, please, it said. Will Mr. Homer Zuckerman bring his famous pig to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand? A special award will be there in 20 minutes. Everyone is invited to attend. Crate your pig, please, Mr. Zuckerman, and report to the judge's booth promptly. For a moment, after this announcement, the Arables and the Zuckermans were unable to speak or move. Then Avery picked up a handful of straw and threw it high in the air and gave a loud yell. The straw fluttered down like confetti into Fern's hair. Mr. Zuckerman hugged Mrs. Zuckerman. Mr. Arable kissed Mrs. Arable. Avery kissed Wilbur. Lurvy shook hands with everyone. Fern hugged her mother. Avery hugged Fern. Mrs. Arable hugged Mrs. Zuckerman. Up overhead in the shadows of the ceiling, Charlotte crouched unseen, her front legs encircling her egg sack. Her heart was not beating as strongly as usual and she felt weary and old, but she was sure at last that she had saved Wilbur's life and she felt peaceful and content. And there's everybody hugging and being all happy because of the announcement.
We have no time to lose, shouted Mr. Zuckerman. Lurvy, help with the crate. Can I have some money, asked Fern. You wait, said Mrs. Arable. Can't you see everyone's busy? Put that empty buttermilk jar in the truck, commanded Mr. Arable. Avery grabbed the jar and rushed to the truck. Does my hair look all right, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Looks fine, snapped Mr. Zuckerman, as he and Lurvy set the crate down in front of Wilbur. You didn't even look at my hair, said Mrs. Zuckerman. You're all right, Edith, said Mrs. Arable. Just keep calm. Templeton, asleep in the straw, heard the commotion and woke up. He didn't know exactly what was going on, but when he saw the men shoving Wilbur into the crate, he made his mind up to go along. He watched for his chance, and when no one was looking, he crept into the crate and buried himself in the straw at the bottom. All right, boys, cried Mr. Zuckerman. Let's go. He and Mr. Arable and Lurvy and Avery grabbed the crate and boosted it over the side of the pen and up into the truck. Fern jumped aboard and sat on top of the crate. She still had straw in her hair and looked very pretty and excited. Mr. Arable started the motor. Everyone climbed in and off they drove to the judge's booth in front of the grandstand. As they passed the Ferris wheel, Fern gazed up at it and wished she was in the topmost car with Henry Fussy at her side. And we have um, a very short amount left, so we'll probably finish this yet this week. Um, there's 22 chapters, and tomorrow is chapter 20, called The Hour of Triumph. I hope you've been enjoying this book as much as I've been enjoying reading it to you. Have a good afternoon.